If you want to add file upload functionality in your Next.js app, there are essentially two ways you can do that. First way involves uploading files from client to server and then server pushes this file to an object storage. In our case, this is going to be an S3 bucket. So there are essentially two main problems with this approach. The first problem is that, that it puts a lot of stress on the server. For example, there could be a lot of users who are actively using your application and they could be trying to upload a lot of files collectively. So in that case, all of the files are first coming to your server and from your server, you're pushing all of those files to an S3 bucket. So that basically puts a lot of stress on the server. That is one of the biggest problem with this approach. And the second problem is that you unnecessarily waste a lot of bandwidth that is available for your server in order, while uh, implementing this upload functionality. However, there's a better way of uh, handling file uploads in your Next.js application and think about it in this way. What if you could upload files directly from client to S3 bucket without the involvement of an intermediate server? That would be amazing, right? So we can do that by using something called S3 pre-signed URL uploads. Let's see how we can implement S3 pre-signed URL uploads in our Next.js application. So I've quickly scaffolded a Next.js project. I've installed a few dependencies. If you look here, AWS SDK, Axios for making request and nothing else. And also we are also installing S3 request pre-signer, which is responsible for delivering us the pre-signed URL. Whenever user selects a file, we call this handle upload function. Inside of this handle upload function, we are first checking if we have the file or not. And then we are getting the file name and file type. And then we are sending this file name and file type to our API route. So if I open the API route, you would see when the request comes here, we are essentially configuring S3 client. We are getting the file name and file type from the request. We are setting up a put command that is basically responsible for putting up the file inside of S3 bucket. And so some of the options that are available inside of put object command is that you can specify your bucket, you can specify the key. So in this case, what I'm essentially saying that inside of this bucket, create a folder which should be named direct upload and then put my file inside of there. And content type is going to be the same as the file type. Now this is really important. If there is a mismatch between the file type, then you won't be able to upload the files. And then we are basically generating a signed URL and we are returning the signed URL to the client along with the object URL. So object URL basically represents the URL that we can use to basically fetch the resource that we have uploaded in the S3 bucket. So now we have basically returned the signed URL. And now the client receives this. We receives this in the front end and we upload our file in the signed URL. Okay, so you can see that I have a bucket named crazy testing bucket. And if I open this, I don't see anything inside of this bucket. Now, let's open our application and try to upload a file. I'll choose a file. You can see that we have basically received a signed request and now we are essentially uploading the file and we are actually logging the progress of the upload. Okay, file successfully uploaded to here. Now if I click on this link to open the file, it won't allow me to do that because the public access for this bucket is blocked. So let's verify by opening the bucket if we have the file or not. So I'll open the bucket, I'll refresh this and we can see that there is a folder named direct upload and this is our file. So that is how you do it. That is how you upload a file from client to S3 bucket without any involvement of server. So this process is very efficient, very scalable as you can see. Now before I wrap up this video, let's also see some of the configuration options that are required when you'll be implementing this pre-signed URL uploads, right? So uh, first thing that you would do is 
you need to basically block all the public access. Obviously, this is not required, but this is a good practice that you should be implementing in your S3 buckets. And then if you are making a request from some from a different origin, in my case, I'm basically making a request from the browser. So the origins are different. So that's why I need to also add this cross origin resource sharing uh, JSON object, JSON code so that I can make the request to S3 bucket. Let me show you. So if I just remove all of this and then I try to upload a file this time, I won't be able to do it because of course policy, right? So I need to edit this back. So what I'm essentially saying is that allow all headers, allow all types of request from this URL and nothing else. So now I can make the request and upload the file. Perfect. So apart from this uh, S3 bucket configuration, you also need AWS credentials to use in your applications. For example, if you look at the backend code that we have here, we need access key ID and secret access key. So for that, what you'll have to do is you'll probably have to come to IAM. IAM basically refers to identity and access management in AWS. And then you need to create a user and for that user you need to give the necessary permission for example i have this test user as you can see right and if i just uh, show you the permission policies for that that this user has the full access amazon s3 full access that, that is why this user is able to perform all of the operations related to s3 bucket now obviously this is not recommended that you give all the permission but depending upon your your use case you could do that so that's all for s3 pre-signed url uploads if you find this video useful uh, like uh, share and subscribe to this channel and i'll catch you in the next video